Joshua, are you ready to do the children's sermon today? Okay. We've been a little low on children, but I asked Joshua, Jesus, if he would be willing to do it by himself, and he said he would. So let's go. <laughs> okay. I didn't get a chance to talk to you beforehand, so you're gonna we're kind of going, going cold turkey here. Did your mother and your dad ever ask you to do anything? They do. You can say yes. <laughs> do you ever, when they ask you to do something, say, I don't want to do it? <laughs> he, 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 was, he hesitated, but then he became honest. He said, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you say you don't want to do it. And how do they react to that? They tell you you're going to be grown. <laughs> so there's a penalty for not obeying. Okay. Uh, have you ever said you wouldn't do it, and then after you talked about it or thought about it, or being told that you're going to be grounded, you go back and do it? Is everything all right then? It doesn't matter that you've said, first of all, that you wouldn't do it. What's really important is that you actually go with it and did it. Okay, well, that's basically our lesson today. So, you did a good job. You did a good job. Yeah. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also give you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, but why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, well, neither will I tell you by what authority I'm doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the Father? They said, well, the first. And Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of heaven before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you do not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. Here is the gospel for today. Please be seated. 
I'm going to start this morning with a parable. This is not a parable from the Bible. It's a parable that somebody else made up. But it's a parable that explains a parable. The parable that we do have in our gospel text this morning. The parable is about a king who was a wise king. One who loved God and loved people. He ruled the kingdom wisely. But one of the things that was a detriment to his rulership was the fact that he had no heir to take over when he died. He was concerned about this and as he grew older and being concerned about who was to come after him to rule the kingdom, he made a pitch to the entire kingdom. He sent his people out and asked for volunteers to be his son, to be the ruler, to be. And he said there are two requirements for this. First of all, you must love God. And secondly, you must love people in order to succeed. Well, of course, a lot of people respond to this, but one person, a particular humble man who looked at that and said, well, I'm re not really worthy to be the king's son, and I'm really not probably someone who's really qualified to be king. But I do love God and I do love people, so I'm going to volunteer my services. So he got ready to go and see the king, but there was one problem. He didn't have very nice clothes, he was poor. And so he decided he'd have to wait until he got proper clothes. So he worked extra hard, did some of the creation of the material by himself, and begged and borrowed, and finally felt that he had clothes that would be nice enough to present himself to the king. Things were going well until he got near the castle. And there was a beggar, somebody who was in need by the roadside. And he called out to him and said, please, can you help me? I'm hungry and I'm cold. Can you help me? The young man responded without hesitation. Responded and found food for him, gave him some extra money, and actually, because his clothes were so ragged, he took off his own clothes and gave it to him and exchanged his, which were ragged. And then he said, well, I don't think I can go and see the king like this. And it seemed to him that he had to go anyway. He said, well, I meet the criteria. Maybe I can explain to the king what happened and he will have a little mercy on me for my dress. When he came to the castle, he was warmly received by the king's herald. They took him after a while, after he waited for a while, into the throne room to present him to the king. The young man came into the room with his face to the floor and fell down on his knees and was about to ask the king for forgiveness for how he was dressed. And as he looked up, he saw the same face the person that he just thought was a beggar who he gave his clothes to. And he said, are you the beggar that I just talked to? And the king said, I am. And he said, well, why are you dressed in my clothes? Why were you dressed in odd, torn, ragged clothes? And he said, because a lot of people have come and wanted to be in this position of being the su su succession to the king. And I had to make sure that they really love people. And I had to see it concretely. I had to see it in action. Words weren't good enough for me. And you have done what you have done freely. You have acted in exactly the way I would hope you have acted, would have acted. And so the kingship will be yours. 
in our minister's meeting this last Thursday, we went over this gospel text to share what we were going to respond to in the text. And actually, there are two parts of this text that all of you have already discovered. The first one talks about the people coming and challenging Jesus' authority. He had just cast all the money changers out of the temple. And he was in a little bit of bad grace with the people of the neighborhood. Why are you doing these things? And why are you speaking these things? And why are you healing? Who gives you this authority? That's what they concentrated on. And I was kind of lost because I was just concentrated on the second part of this. This thing, this parable about the two sons. I couldn't see how the two interrelated, but they spent the whole time on the authority of Jesus, which I didn't have any problem with. I really like the parable of the two sons that Jesus told people in response to those asking about his authority. Because he wasn't really concerned about whether they thought they had authority or not, he ought to judge them by his works. And so he asked them a question in a pair, a man and two sons. He asked them to do something. One said, I will not go, but later changed his mind and went. The other said, I will go and do what you told me. And he didn't do anything. Now, which one really did the work of the master? And of course, the answer is easy. And the theme then becomes, talk is cheap. Let me see your act. This is always a hard sell in the Lutheran church because we're so hooked on grace that we almost are embarrassed to say that God expects something from you. Yes, we are saved by his grace. Yes, we are not working our way to heaven. But God expects something. He likes to see the action. And that's the point of the parable today. George Washington, during the Revolutionary War, was set upon by a young man and walked up to him and said, Mr. Washington, I heartily support what you are doing. I am very much in support of your cause. And Washington said, young man, well, who is your commander? What regiment are you in? And what is your route? What is the uniform you wear? The uniform of the particular state militia that he was in. And the man responded and said, well, you don't understand, I'm a civilian. And Washington said, young man, you're a healthy young man. If you were really a supporter of mine, you'd have a uniform on and you carry a rifle. First call, there was a thing that went out in the city of Miami a number of years ago, a big municipal uh, cleaning of a beautification project for the city of Miami. And the city council uh, directed uh, 25 people, selected 25 people to be, to lead this beautification project. And actually to be responsible for taking care of it. They got their names published in the paper of how loyal they were to the city of Miami. And there was a clamor that Sprout uh, sprung up about pe from people that wanted to be involved in the project too. We are also loyal citizens of Miami. We'd like to be a part of it. What happened is that 131 people said that they would be fully involved in the beautification project. When the first meeting was called to start the project, 19 people showed up. Almost sounds like a lot of churches, doesn't it? Jesus makes a statement in Matthew, he who hears my word and does them is my apostle. We can't stop and just saying he who believes, but he who also goes out and does the work of the kingdom. And that famous 
famous passage in Matthew on the last judgment where people come before the throne and, and he is asked and are told, I was hungry and you gave me to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. I was sick and in prison and you visited me and on and on. They say, well, we haven't done it to you. Jesus says, I will say to you, inasmuch as you have done it to the least of these, my brother, you have done it also to me. All the passages in scripture, all the parables that refer to doing God's word have action implied or directly talked about. The good Samaritan was not good because he had good manners, went to Sunday school, he was the good Samaritan because he helped somebody who was suffering. The rich young ruler was not an immoral man. He said, I have obeyed every law in the law itself. Every one of them I have been faithful to. But he was immoral because it was somebody sitting at his doorstep for most of his life who needed help and never received anything. And a rich man, and a rich young ruler, again, it's not what was said. All the pretty things that were cited, all the laws that were made was the giving of something to someone who was in need. There's one person who said there's always three people, three ways that people respond to action in any organization. There are, first of all, the recliners. Secondly, there are the whiners. And thirdly, there are the shiners. This is a political guy, but it kind of refers to any organization that does it. Some that just like to lay back and do nothing. Some that will do something under a lot of pressure and complain about it and say what a good job they're doing and how much of a sacrifice they're making. And then there are just some people that just go and get the job done. And that's what Jesus was talking about in the parable of the two sons. There's a country song by Kenny Thomas, and it's entitled Not Me. You don't hear about it. I never heard about it before. I read some uh, description of it. Uh, I guess it's never on Willie's station. But Kenny Rogers recorded it, not me. And it starts out with a picture of a group of kids getting ready for uh, a baseball season, young kids. And out of the people that are there, there is only one, one daddy. And they said, we want you to be the coach. And he immediately says, why me? Why me? Not, not with my job. With all the time that I have that's taken care of, not me. And then the song says, the world becomes a better place and someone stands up and leads the way. And the response to this young dad says, all the baseball leagues are run by a lot of dads who said, not me, at first. And then it talks about family of children that lost their parents. And there is a call out to the oldest real living brother, take care of the children. Why me? Why do I have that responsibility? No, I don't want to do it. And again, the chorus comes in and says, the world is made better by those people who stand up and lead the way. And so, I don't know how you picture yourself in relationship to the two brothers this morning. I don't know if you are feeling the call, any resistance said, why me? My time is valuable. And then you get up and change your mind. And the message of the text was, I guess it doesn't matter what your first response was. 
But what is important, if the not be, turns into someone who will lead the way. Amen. <laughs> Sermon hymn, Children of the Heavenly Father, 781. 781. Stand as you are able. 